I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hey everybody, before you jump into this week's Combat Sports UK podcast, I've got some exciting news for you. Do you want to look as stylish as Thomas Shelby when you train? Do you want to experience the comfort that can only be achieved by a cup of tea on a cold day? Well, good news for you guys. X Marshall has partnered with us, Combat Sports UK. They are the fastest growing brand in martial arts for a reason. They are making waves and taking practitioners with their slick, stylish and hilarious designs that are fit for a king. From rash guards to shorts, streetwear and more, X Marshall has got you covered. X Marshall is an extremely community oriented brand, having given away over $50,000 in free gear last year alone, as well as sponsoring over 300 athletes. And if you shop using the code CSUK10 at checkout, you can get 10% off everything in store. That code again is CSUK10 at checkout. Go and check out xmarshall.com and enjoy the fight. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Combat Sports UK MMA podcast. And as always, I'm joined by a man who not only would not cut that hair to make weight, but he would then not take that hair to the scales in order to make weight. It is John Gamebred Boguslavsky. How are you, my friend? Way better than, I believe, English fans right now. Um, but yeah, what about you? Look, mate, you, jo- you join us in the, uh, in the period of losers. Um, you know, neither of us can win anything. Canadians didn't exactly do much in the Cup of America. We, we suffered, but, you know, best team won. Best team won overall. Um, as long as, well, you know, Spain, Spain can take Wimbledon. They can take the Euros. As long as Max Holloway beats Ilya Taporia if they have a fight. <laughs> It's fine. No problem. I just want to mention Canada wasn't even supposed to be top four and they <laughs> ended up being four. So they beat people, they beat teams like Mexico, US, uh, yes. Peru. So they did. They did. I they did very well. They did very well. We reached for the stars and we aimed for the moon and we, we got to the moon. We didn't get yeah, to the stars just yet. You done pretty well with an upcoming World Cup. But anyway, that's not what the people are here to hear about. They want to hear about the UFC. Over the weekend, they probably don't want to hear about late month and January over this weekend. I promise we'll keep that short. But um, Rose Nami Yunus defeating Tracy Cortez, unanimous decision, pretty much as we saw it, right? I mean, did you really see anything that surprised you or anything other than what we thought would happen? Surprised Rose actually dropped Tracy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't think she carried that power to fly weight. The same power she had at straw weight. Um, but nothing surprising. I think just five round, four and a half minutes, four and a half rounds of domination for Rosa Manunas against Tracy. She was trying, you know, she was in the lower rankings, see how she's tested herself against probably the top female fighters, and she failed. Um, it's not a setback, I would say. Just, you know, you lose, you learn, and you're going to come back stronger from this for Tracy. And Hopefully, with a stronger uh, eyebrow <laughs> or eyelashes, eyelashes, eyelash, eyelash. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe that when I saw it. You see, you see a lot of them in some of the uh, the party places in the UK, but I never thought I'd see one in an octagon. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, maybe she forgot. Who knows? Who knows what happened with that? And yeah, man, I, I pretty much share your your sentiments with that. Really, I was surprised that Rose managed to knock her down, but. When Rose catches a punch, she's, she's proved she can knock down the best. You know, uh, JJ, uh, John Whaley, obviously, with that head kick. Now Tracy Cortez. Um, one thing I did notice that did actually surprise me is how much bigger I thought Tracy Cortez looked. Did you did you agree? I, I think she looked much bigger than Rose. That was, that's the story of Rose being a flyweight. It seems like everybody she fights, except probably Hebus, yeah. look, um, looks way bigger than Rose. It looks like she's like compromising. She doesn't feel like she has anything left to straw weight. She's crom- compromising to be a flyweight. She's definitely compromising size because we saw against Ferriot, she looked much smaller. Cortez mm-hmm. looked bigger. And I believe if she fought Barber, she would also look smaller. If she fought Grasso, she fought Shevchenko, she would fight uh, Aaron Blanchfield, she would look smaller than any of them. And I this is why I feel like there's three tiers in the flyweight divisions, like the champions. Potential champions for Yacht, Grasso, and Shevchenko. Blanchfield tier two, and then Rose tier three, and everybody down there. 
And I remember. So I, it depends how we see if we see Blanchfield versus Rose next. We'll definitely see what are the power rankings of that division. I want to jump on that 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 little power rankings thing you've set up there. I mean, what makes you put Rose in that in that third tier, so to speak? Well, the only person she couldn't be was Manuel Ferriot, and we clearly know she would be next for the title after Shevchenko and Grasso do their thing yeah. for the third time. She beat ba- ba- Aaron Banchfield, who was I w- my pick to become flyweight become the champion she was undefeated in the UFC I believe and she had a crazy like 10 fight winning streak 11 fight winning streak so we clearly see the the different tiers between them so we have mm-hmm. a top we have three people at the top which have Shenko Grasso for yacht who is supposed to challenge for the belt Blanchfield who's right right there we'll see how Rose does against Blanchfield and everybody else which is our Cortez Hibas Andrade everybody down there that is isn't good enough or not ready yet to be in the, in the higher tiers. It's just There's a clear difference between between the fighters on top there. Yeah, we'll see Barber, get... which, yeah, we'll see as well as Barber which which tier she'll falls into because she hasn't fought anybody top tier, right? Caitlin Chikugian, I don't know her last name now, she changed it. Samara, she, I think. Yeah, she's now in the, she's lower tier. She couldn't, she can't exactly beat the champion. She couldn't beat Barber, now she's like somewhere lower. So definitely there's a big separations and you clearly tell in that division. Yeah, you can you can kind of see it play out that way in, in the rankings. You've obviously got like you said, Caitlin uh Seminara there, Natalia Silva hanging in there, Kibas as well. I mean look out of the women's divisions it's one of the more exciting ones. Obviously your girl on the undercard Jasmine Jazz the Vicious picking up the win as well. Casey O'Neill's fighting in a couple of weeks. Um, yep. She was on a tear before before she lost. So there is some interesting names in, in this division. I mean, let's stick with, I think it's pretty clear what Tracy Cortez needs to go and do. She took this on short notice. Let's go and get her another fight in that top 15, maybe yep. down, maybe Kareem Silva, um, Ariana Da Silva. But what, what do you think for Rose? Like, what, what would you like to see Rose do next? Do you want to see the Macy Barber rematch or do you want a Blanchfield rematch? What do you think? Barber or Blanchfield, that's your two options. You can, you have to look up now since you kind of like defended your ranking in this high, in a sense. Now you got to look up, see what you can do against the, the top range a lot. So Barber, we have a lot of expectations over her and we have a lot of expectations on Aaron Blanchfield. Those are the, the one or either or, that's the two fighters you have to make for, for Rose since Barber's very injured right now, from what I hear. You got to do Blanchfield. Blanchfield's in fought since the New Jersey car versus Fur Yacht. She looks like she was taking kind of time off to uh, rethink herself. So I think Rose will be a good test, a former champion. You win against Rose, you're right back in the title contention and could get the loser of Grouse of Shevchenko while Fur Yacht versus the winner of that will fight. Hmm. Yeah, there is a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a traffic jam starting to build at the top. I think, I think like, I agree with you that Furo is is out of the way, the number one, number one contender. Um, you know, ahead of ahead of those ahead of Blanchard, obviously, because she beat her. Yeah. And then, yeah, I, th- I think either of those two match up for Rose. I mean, how would you see how would you see them going? Would you fancy? I don't know if I like Rose against Blanchfield. Depends how you want to build Rose. If you want to try and get into the title shot as quickly as possible, or do you want to build Blanchfield's name further off the back of Rose? I like the Barber matchup a bit more, to be honest. I think either way, Rose will lose to them because okay. Barber and Blanchfield, I haven't seen them next to each other, but I would presume that Blanchfield and Rose and uh, Blanchfield and Sorry, who were we just talking? Blanchfield, Barber. Barber, exactly. Macy Barber are bigger than Rose, mm. and they're wrestling heavy type fighters. Mm. And I don't see them having trouble taking down, uh, having trouble taking Rose down and just staying on top of her for three to five rounds. That's how I see the difference in them because Rose is more of a jujitsu and striker specialist. She's short, she's short and fast, and I think Barber and Blanchfield will just overpower them. Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree. I agree. I think it's interesting to have Rose in there. I mean, I kind of echo back to our podcast we did when she fought Piro. Like, what? What is she down here for? Can oh, up here for? Sorry, what? Or can she actually achieve it? I don't think so. Honestly, I would really, really like to see her versus Barato. Not necessarily Shevchenko because I think Shevchenko would be too big for her and have a bit too much power. But I would really like to see that that match up on the feet against Alexa Grasso. So maybe you but find you, a way somehow. If you see Rose or Shevchenko, who would you take? Shevchenko? Easily Shevchenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rose is Faryat. Faryat, since you've already seen it once, right? Yeah. I even think I would, if Grasso technically beat Shevchenko now, uh, I would say Grasso over Rose as well. Would you agree? Even though if the striking would be interesting, I just think Grasso would overpower Rose. Yeah, I, I agree, but I think it'd be a bit more interesting because with Alexa, it's a lot of speed and combination, and I really like, you know, Rose's in-and-out movement. That's why I think it's interesting, whereas, you know, your um, Firo and, and Valentina are a bit more power punches. They'll put a bit more pressure on you. They'll try and walk you down a little bit more, use the kicks and things like that. So I think it's a less... I would favor them two more against Rose, and I would favor... Alexa against Rose, because I think I'm just interested to see how the combinations and the speed will catch up with the, you know, the one-twos that Rose throws and then the moving in and out, if that makes sense. So essentially, Rose's uh, only chance to the belt at Flyaway would be against Grasso. Pretty much, I think, yeah. Okay. Because we've seen, we've seen how the Fiero fight turns out. Um, right. I don't think, I don't think she gets, there was no evidence in that fight that she would um, get a rematch back. Right, and be able to kind of recover that. And unless Valentina is now shot, unless now she's done, she's running out of gas, she's towards the end of her career. What is she, 35, 36 now? Yeah, something like that. Okay, maybe you could you could see you could see a chance. But if Valentina loses this this rematch, does she go, does she carry on? You know, does she go back up to Bantam weight, for example, now that Amanda Nunes is out of the picture? We don't know, you know, to stop cutting the weight and that kind of thing. So I think the Valentina question is a bit more uncertain because it would almost be a Max Holloway situation, right? How many times would she have to fight to get another shot back at that belt mm -hmm. if she lost to uh, Alexa? Get a, right. a last second knockout and the <laughs> a five round <laughs> fight you're dominating against a person that's on the weight class above you. That's that's how Shevchenko would have to get it done. Yeah, exactly. So. I don't know. It's it's an interesting picture. I think the UFC will probably rebook the Macy Barber match, considering that Rose won and was pretty convincing for three out of the five rounds. Um, and then they just kind of play it out. As for you know Blanchfield, they might. I mean, who is she? Who is she not for? She's fought Talia Santos, Andrade. So those out of the top, the top echelon of that division. Uh, yeah, she's obviously lost her hero. Yeah, it's tough. Could you do you give her Caitlin Seminara? Is she coming off a win? Because you've got to keep her busy in the meantime, right? As well. So right. Well, it depends again. It depends what Aaron Blanchard wants to do. What do you want to do? And if Rose is ready to fight, Barbara's injured, so you give her time. Even yeah, like you just said, Caitlin might be a good fight if she wants to. Caitlin seems like just kind of somebody who fights every few months to fill up a spot on the on the card and get her yeah. money. Could be anybody. Um I don't know. I would go as far as like, I don't think Rose is looking down, so I wouldn't give her like Jasmine. No, 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 no. Yes, I wouldn't give her anybody there. I think yeah, she only has to look up, and she's ranked five now, I believe. So you know, people in front of her is Grasso, Shevchenko, Blanchfield, Furyat, and Blanchfield. So those are your only options if you want to go look lower. Caitlin and Barbara, who just fought, and Barbara won, so. Maybe instead of Barbara, who's injured, you give her Caitlyn just to like keep Rose busy, give her more of a claim to get a title shot. But it's really just like those five, six people you're looking at. You're not looking lower. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's go into the co-main event, split decision win for Muslim Salakov. Interested to hear your thoughts about if you scored it that way. Did you score it a Muslim Salikov win or did you score for from the Nibia? I wasn't mad with the decision. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I was kind of zoning out in and out of that fight. <laughs> um, I was surprised when Santiago took Muslim down. Was it in the second round? 
And I think it was, yeah. Try to hold him there. Um, the only reason I would have Santiago winning is because it did more advancing and putting more pressure. Mm. And compared to what uh, Solikov did, that's the only reason I would. Get... Maybe some Muslim just probably landed more power shot. Seemed hurt more than. So, still so pretty close fight. I think the way we predicted that fight for our preview was exactly how it happened. Yeah. And it wasn't the best fight. It was like an it was it was okay, especially with the fight right before them. You were like, you're all hyped up. And now this fight goes on. You see old, two old men fighting, and it wasn't much action. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I don't have too much to add to that. So let's go to the fight before that that you <laughs> mentioned. The uh, the fight of the night, the, the absolute bloody war, bloody mess. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Gene Silva versus Drew Dober. I mean, 50 Gs, very, very well warranted for both fighters. Um, you know, you could probably actually fit 50 grand worth of dollar bills in Drew Dober's <laughs> cut. The, <laughs> the way it was looking um, in, that, in that third round. I mean, man. What a fight. It's fights like this that make these cards worth watching, right? Yes. And it shows you what how fun John Silva can be if you don't have the weight controversy behind him. Now I'm actually curious, is he going to continue at featherweight where he missed weight or he could stay up at lightweight where he fought someone who's like legit. He has the second most knockouts in lightweight yeah. history with Drew Dober. And Dober looked... He, Dober still looked good, but John Silva would have with his feet going backwards. Did how, look how much damage he's done on against a striker who's as good as Dober. So I, I was very impressed with John Silva. That's two knockouts, two take two TKOs in two weeks. Yeah, and this guy wants to fight on like a tender series again for some reason. So I, I don't know if you heard that he said he wants to fight a contender series again. If anybody needs a fight there. I think it's crazy, but I think John Silva needs to have needs to really look at who his next opponent could be because Dober's right outside the the lightweight rankings, and he yeah, Dober's legit, man. seriously legit. He has Dober fought Moicano, who's Moicano was ranked now, and they were fighting for Dober was ranked back then, so he's mm -hmm. right outside the the rankings. Is John Silva does he see himself as a a faster weighted belt through lightweight or back down featherweight. I think any matchup with the Silva now is it's going to be incredible. And there's some banging, there's some banging fight. If he stays in that in that lightweight division, which I think he can, man. I mean, just those those spinning elbows, everything he was throwing, he just looked so good. And you'd usually expect, especially as he missed weight in the last fight, right? You'd expect that he would come into this performance a little bit um, deflated. Maybe it's a really tough weight cut, doesn't quite make it. Still, obviously, gets the um, gets the finish there and gets gets himself a really good win with a hell of an uppercut. But you wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected that kind of performance against a guy like Drew Dober. You know? Now we've really, really seen what this dude's made of. I wasn't expecting it specifically, but I said, I told myself if I was him, because I missed weight a week ago. And I'm stepping on short notice here. I gotta prove everybody like forget the weight miss and prove why I'm in the UC. Prove who I am. And he he freaking did. I yeah. think those nasty elbows, like got a ton of blades on him. Like the counter elbows was beautiful. Just Dober kept advancing too. What a madman. The, <laughs> the, the cojones on him to <laughs> to keep going. And Dober still landed like a few shots. Like he John John ate them. Yeah, so and those fighting nerds are, are different breed, I would say. So I want to. I'm interested in see what those fighting nerds could do. Yeah, they're they're on the they're UFC. on the up, man. They're on the up. I mean, saying that we've obviously both in agreement that we want to see him stick at lightweight. There's some hell, hellacious matchups there for him. Is there anyone that jumps out for you right now that you want to see him fight? I don't think a top fifteen is ready yet, but definitely someone. Uh, on the cusp of it, right? Um, top of my head, I just wanted to mention I wouldn't mind seeing him at featherweight as well, as long yeah. as he makes the weight. You can't just keep missing weight and be 
And as if you think you can easily make weight at lightweight, keep going. But somebody at lightweight who would be good. I don't know. I could only think of somebody top 15. I wouldn't mind seeing him like against uh, Benoit Saint Denis or like. Yeah, uh, that'd be it. <laughs> I th- even at featherweight, I would say Sadiq Youssef would be a good fight. Mm-hmm. Somebody like a Giga Chikadze, obviously strikers that could who would like to advance and fight. Even Calvin Cater, I think would be a good matchup. But a lightweight, who's just somebody outside of the cusp of the top fifteen, that would I've be a good a matchup. Let's hear it. I've got a name. I mean, you obviously remember, you know, friend of the podcast, friend of the channel, uh, Chris Duncan. Oh. <laughs> Why right. would you want to? Well, why do you want to do Chris Duncan dirty? Hold like on, that? hold on. There's a gentleman um, that secured a victory over him in his last fight out. A guy named Manuel Torres. Manuel Torres, but he's fighting at UC Noche against Ignacio Bahamandes, and I think that's a fire fight. Is that book? Oh, I didn't that know is that book. That is one of the okay. six fights that are confirmed. Right? There's four more ah. that Dana said, but yes, that'll be fire. If it's like okay. Manuel Torres, wow. Nelson yeah. Hernandez, but they those are the type of people you'd fight in the rankings later down. You'd be like, it'll be like a main event spot for like in UC if they have a fight in Mexico or in Brazil. Yeah, I like can a see fight that. Fight night or pay per view main card. Um, Bahamandes had high expectations, and I and I think he kind of lowered them now. He has a few losses. I think that'll be a good fight before to get into the rankings. If Bahamondes loses, yeah, Johnson will be in. Yeah, I mean somebody like uh, a Thiago Moises. He's a bit of a fraud checker, isn't he? He might be a good one to go in there yeah. with Brazil on Brazil. Uh, that could be a pretty fun fight. But one thing's for sure is the uh, the future is very bright for this young yep. man. Look, obviously we're in a bit of a time constraint today because of me. Um, so, is there anything else you want to jump into from that car before we chat very quickly about about Lemos? And Janji Rob, I have a feeling where you might go, but let's see. Um, I'll skip Gabriel Bonafim. I think uh he just did what he, he did to get a win. Uh Erosa, Gilly season is back. I can't believe he did that to Rodriguez because Rodriguez yeah. was a fraud tracker. He was the yeah. the he was the the guy who was beating all the up and comers that Dana liked. I'm not gonna talk about Cody Quit Brundage. Cody Quit. <laughs> yeah, so I will go. I will go. If you're talking, if you think about uh, the two uh, fights after that, Joshua Van. Mm-hmm. I mean, Charles Johnson out of nowhere with a beautiful uppercut. I, think <laughs> I had Van 2018 going to the third. Yeah, so did I. Mm-hmm. And Johnson just like third round blitzed. He's like, he just threw every shot he had and then landed uppercut. And I think Van. Did not see that coming at all. Like that was that was crazy. Johnson, that's like that's two fights in a row now. He fought Jake Hardley last time, who's also like a young up and comer guy. Yeah. And he, he defeated both of them. And I gotta talk about, of course, Jasmine, Jazz Jazz Davidia, Jazz Davicious. Um short notice fight against somebody who's first time fighting in the UFC. And every time she seemed like she was getting overpowered in the striking, she took down, took her down, went to the wrestling, and got the comfortable victory. She was good, Jackson. Oh, she, she was really was good. good. I think she looked really good. I think she she didn't. It showed her I fight IQ and age experience of fighting in the octagon. She's like, I'm getting overwhelmed here. Perfect. I'll just take you down, and yeah. and hold you there. And she didn't just like lay and pray. She like tried for submission. She threw those elbows. She would keep being active. Which is like the biggest complaint where we have with other people that are just taking people down. And do you want to talk about Montel Jackson? Oh, I mean, I mean, Dominic Cruz set it up perfectly, right? <laughs> you want to watch those combinations of straight hands? Oh, yeah, okay, hold my beer, boom, Mister Cruz. Whoa, I mean, that's that's up there with all time commentary uh, commentary calls, isn't it? I mean, what a oh, what a right hand. I mean, look, is is it not kind of a a carbon copy of what Peyton Talbot did a couple of weeks ago, right? Like, I, I see some similarities there in terms of te- technicality and things. Um, uh, is that who you want to see the X for him? No, 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 no. Don't put them two together yet, man. Like, let no, them yeah, let exactly. them both go and tear. Similar to what we're saying about Silver and Torres, right? Don't let them don't let them go at each other yet. But man, he's 
he's exciting. He kind of came out of nowhere. I from honestly, I wasn't too aware of him. Um, I knew a bit more about Damone Blackshear than him, but he came out of nowhere and then boom, absolutely put the guy down. Um, and he's got quite quite a quite a track record of of knockouts and and of doing that to people. So man, he could be exciting. He could be exciting. Yeah, I mean, eight wins by knockout. His last before that, he was he had two fights scheduled against uh, Ferry Bashrod, and Ferry Bashrod is kind of legit. Mm-hmm. Had to redraw Satan Nurmagomedov, and he had to redraw, uh, not him, no, Nurmagomedov had to redraw, and Bashrod got to redraw. So let's see where he's at. He's probably like a right in the cusp cusp of top fifteen with with um Payne Talbot. They're a bantamweight. There's it's probably the new it, yeah. Division of uh, the UC it used to be light. Lightweight was there. Light heavy was a few years ago. Bantamweight is like so stacked and so good right now. Yeah, well, it's, a lot of it's young prospects. It's way up there, and it's it, it's pretty amazing. So overall, I think I think a really a really good fight card. We know the crowd in Denver always brings it. The original home of the of the UFC, um, flipping quite dramatically to back to the apex it feels like a little while since we've been back in the apex right when was the last apex card um i can't can't even recall uh, if been let me see because we had we had saudi arabia we had sorry a 303 saudi arabia yeah seems like that's that that's that to retire i was a little, it, because we had a break after you see through it was so it's yeah, been yeah, a yeah solid month it's been a solid yeah, it was month that's that's tyro against um so this is uh, Amanda Lemosh against Vima Janjiroba. I mean, Amanda Lemosh seems to be pretty much the stalwart of the top of the division. She's um, coming off a win against Mackenzie Dern. I mean, really, who isn't nowadays, to be honest? And Janjiroba's coming off, you know, an impressive three-fight win streak. Lubita Godinez, uh, Marina Rodriguez, and Angela Hill, all by unanimous decision. And Mackenzie Dern... Um, Getting beaten by Amanda Lemosh by unanimous decision. Um, and I saw a ridiculous statistic the other day um, that something like 80% of women's main events go down to decisions. Decision. So we've yeah. obviously just had one this past weekend. Are we in for another one back at the apex, Mr. Bogoslavsky? <laughs> Mr. <Mystic> Cruz? Yes. <laughs> I believe so. I, I don't see... Unless somebody takes somebody down really i don't see it be differently and they i actually there's only two times i remember actually one time a woman's main event finishing that's probably when amanda nunez was back fighting in the apex i remember lemos getting head get the standing guillotine submission mm-hmm. when just got Raj got on her that's the only two times i fin i remember finished feeling to remember that there's a finish in the main event for women's but yeah i don't know how much mma fans are excited about this i feel like lamosh is like a gatekeeper at this point in the strawweight division and if they're not nice, trying to get into title contention so i see just her as a way of like Getting a chance to fight Zhang Wei Li because Zhang Wei Li kind of cleared out the division. Rose Lee, yeah. I don't have a clear number one contender there, so it could be the the winner of this. But Lemos doesn't deserve a rematch against Wei Li. She got properly 50 43. Yeah, 30, she got, she got taken fight. right out. So Lemos has to build up. Right she has to build up a good winning streak to get back into title contention. But I don't know how exciting. Um. The fans are here. Yeah, I mean, you've got you've got Tatiana Suarez kind of looming, looming over the division. Um, you seem to have a bit of an inside knowledge on the sphere. Is she booked on the sphere or not? I don't quite remember. I don't think she was. No, no, I think she. I don't think she, she came was. back. She had the massive win, looked amazing, um, and then she got injured again. Right? Yep. She beat She's she beat injured. Jessica Andrade. She's... Looked really good and then got injured again. So we don't really know where she She's too is. injured prone, yeah. Yeah, we don't really know where she is. She's number one. She would be your obvious number one contender. But really then, yeah, Yan Xiaonan just got beat by the champ. I mean, the Lemosh just got beat by the champ as well. Um, Jessica Andrade 
you never really know. She can draw a couple of wins together. And then you're down to Janji Roba. So, yeah, that's it's really awesome. just to set her up. I think she gets, I think she gets to win. She gets to win, she gets a title shot. I think, yeah, yeah, it's clear. Yeah, there's need, no clear, they need people they to, need fight her to fight. Yeah, they need her to fight. There's a bunch of good UC uh pay per views coming up with rumored to be maybe not the sphere, but Salt Lake City. I don't know, Abu Dhabi, if they'll be interested in a women's fight. Mm-hmm. And but there's definitely you need to get Whaley fighting again because she fought UC 300. We're coming up to 304. That's four months now. Get her fight yeah. camp. Yeah, got to get her going. Yeah, got to get her going, man. I mean, um, how do you see it going? What's your, what's your prediction for it? Just because I want to get a uh, fight for for um, for Vivian, mm-hmm. for Verna, I'm going to get the Verna decision. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna agree with you there. She's a bit of a grinder. Um, elsewhere on the card, I mean, I only really have one thing that I'm tuning in for, and that's Duho Choi. I mean, you know very well his his fight with Cub Swanson is my favorite fight of all time. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, seeing how he can come back against Bill Algio. Um, yeah, Duho Choi. I mean, he's kind of always been in and out. He had his he had his national national service, and has you know fallen on a bit of hard times. Lost to Charles Jordan, Jeremy Stevens. After the Cubs Swanson won, um, he did get a majority decision draw with Kyle Nelson last time out last year. That was February last year, so he's already been out a year and a quarter, just about. So I'm hoping he can get get back to winning ways and provide some some excitement to this card. I mean, other than that, man, I mean, is there anything you want to highlight in particular? Brian Kelleher's on the card; he's always pretty exciting. But... Kelker, you know, Kelleher always brings it. Did get knocked out by Cody. Garbrandt in his last fight. Um, Mo Usman's back. Yeah, we haven't seen him in a while. Just I still believe talking. he should be a light heavyweight fighter. Yeah. Um, and uh, Duan Choi, of course, he's always fun to watch. He always brings it. Bruno Silva's back. Does, I mean, other than that, it's like it's not the most exciting fight card on paper. Yeah, it's a it's it's a little thin on the ground, um, and you know if it's not Conor McGregor, it's John Jones. We've got something to talk about to, to fill out the podcast a little bit here. I mean, John Jones has just been charged um, with what's gone on with the uh, drug free sport representative. I mean, this guy, you know, with Tom Aspinall fighting uh, not this weekend but next weekend, I guess he's probably not going to go to jail for it. But even still, it's it's not a good look, is it, right? It's going to go under the rug again. I think it's just we're so used to it. We're like, oh, Jones? Oh, okay. We'll see you in November. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think he's not anything. I don't think any repercussions will go to it. Dana is not going to strip him of the belt. They're going to they're gonna settle on this. He's going to he's gonna let it pass. I did hear a rumor that John Jones was injured right before this news came out, and I think he was trying to deviate the news from this. That's that he knew was going to come out. Interesting. I mean, I don't know how would you feel getting run out of your house by the late heavyweight heavyweight champion with a with a gun at three p.m. while he was like probably all drunk and coked up. Yeah, it'd be pretty scary. Man. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know how to take this news. I just think it's, I'm so used to hearing news from Jones, like that it's just, just it's just numb, it's neutral at this point. Like, just, oh, another disappointment from Jones, no repercussions, and he's yeah. gonna fight at MSG. Like, I just, I think just uh, rinse, wash, and repeat. Yeah, and then he'll probably go off into the sunset and, and, and retire, right? That's probably, probably what's gonna happen, especially with this. This looming over him. I mean, it's not it's not a good look. Um, it would be really curious to see what happens if he does face a bit of jail time, but very doubtful that he will. Oh yeah. Um, I don't think he's gonna see the inside of the cell. I don't think no, so. Definitely not, definitely not. And I mean there is rumors obviously of, of McGregor and Chandler now having a date sorted. Ariel Hawani kind December. of did a bit of a, Yeah, Hawani did kind of a breakdown uh yesterday on uh, on his podcast, kind of laying out the rest of the year. Uh, but it's looking like what we thought, you know, Marab and Sean at the Spear with Alexa and Valentina, and then uh, Max and Taporia, Islam, Zarukian, Jones, Miocic, 
McGregor, Chandler. So some fun fights in there, though, right? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to confirm the the Noche. You see Noche, the the sphere fight. Aldina and Norma Dumont is already confirmed a bantamweight, right? Okay, that's good. Michelle Pereira, Anthony Herna- Fluffy Hernandez. I think it's okay. a banger fight. Yeah. Yasmin Yorgi, uh, the 22 year old Mexican versus uh, Caitlin Souza. Okay. Uh, Ronald Rodriguez is Audi Osborne and uh, Edgar Chavez versus Kevin Boreas. So I think those are prelims. The yeah. last three I mentioned Michelle Pereira, Hernandez. Aldena Duma probably on the main card. So there's I I think I'm missing a fight I couldn't find. I couldn't find. There's probably six already booked. So there's four more to be booked. Regrasov Chuchenko, O'Malley Mirab. So there's mm-hmm. two more bangers they could add on with to be there. Yeah, I mean and we're a couple of months away. Right? So surely they've got to be announced. Well, September fourteenth. Within, the next, within yeah. the next two weeks, right? They've got they've got to get these announced. We're actually kind of three months exactly away. Yeah. Right. July, July 14th, August 14th, mm-hmm. September 14th. So they should yeah. be announcing people soon for a fight camp, especially if they want a belt there. They need, I would say, more than six weeks of uh, training camp notice. Yeah, easily, easily. Um, listen, man, we're going to be back. We're going to be back this week to uh, to preview the UFC 304, the big show down oh, yeah. in Manchester where um, John will be uh, donning the great big blonde wig once again for Paddy Pimlet. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm not a fan of Paddy. <laughs> um, so I'm sure I did. Gonna... did you hear the rumors that Paddy might not re-sign with the UFC? It's his I last did. fight. Yeah, 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 he's talking talking a big game. I don't know if it's a bluff to make Dana pay him more, but he said like if these YouTuber boxers are paying him $20 million to fight, yeah, I don't know what what does Patty want for his legacy. That's I mean, or not? Question. If you if if you're Nate Diaz, you're not getting paid, <laughs> right? You're not. Oh, getting that's paid. that's even more crazy. How do you have a contract for ten million, paying one million, and you tell you cannot give him nine million because your wife will divorce you <laughs> due to financial? Are you crazy? Yeah, it's, I, it's wild. If I was Diaz, I'd give him a special Stockton slap as well to get his <laughs> senses back into him. Now you're gonna is, now you're gonna be down ten million and a wife. Yeah, dude, it's it's really wild. Of all people, Nate Diaz is not the one you want to do it to. Um, no. But that that'll, that'll that'll wrap us up for this week. Um, we will be back later in the week. Keep your eyes out for the big three or four uh, preview. That'll be quite a long one, so make sure you're. Um, You've got the pod downloaded on whatever platform and you're ready to listen. Listen, man, as always, thanks a lot for your time. Keep your hair. Don't go cutting away, cutting your hair off, doing anything dark. Take your eyelashes out before you go and fight. We're all behind you, man. <laughs> I'll make sure I'll put a checklist like that. Yeah. Yeah, nice one. Right. Thanks, my man. Take care. Thank you.